deep and dismal day in Spain. The rain in Spain falls mainly on the plain, but right now it's drizzling out of the sky on this climb up to Lagos uh, uh, de Cabadonga, this famous climb been used so many times in the past. And I said earlier on our program, won by uh, Robert Miller way back in 1986, this particular climb. Lacho Jalabé got it ahead of Zula. Uh, Giannetti third, Romiga in fourth spot. Romiga still doesn't seem to have found his way back into this group now as they're on the final, uh, what, uh, eight kilometres or so, ten kilometres or so of this, uh, this climb. Uh, popped off down the road, Dominguez, but been looking very powerful when we had our, our ad break was um, uh, Brushard. Brushard has been out of form in this race so far, but in fact he began to get quite perky at the front and start to uh, make life difficult for people. Now again, it's Ascarchin's on the go now. Hey, let's get it very quickly where he is on the general classification because this is a good move by Ascarchin to frighten a few people. Uh, he could well be now trying to pull back that uh, gap that exists between him and, uh, and Zulup. He's coming into this stage today, uh, well over two minutes down on the, uh, the classification. In fact, I quickly flip to my papers now. Uh, we have him overall behind uh, the leader by, let's see, it's exactly 2 minutes and 28 seconds is the gap then back to Escartin. I don't know if he pulled that up back now, but he's certainly having a darn good go, and he's got a number of his teammates behind him to provide moral support if they come up to him as well. But you can see the gap now, the yellow jersey of the Anse team suddenly have hit the panic button. They can't allow this man too much room. This is the sort of climb that suits Escartin. It's going to be tough up towards the top, and he's gone away now. If Escartin is going to stamp his authority on a challenge for the uh, Amarillo jersey, he has to do it now. Ten kilometers to go. Up in front is Dominguez. A beautiful one-two by the Calme team. They sent Dominguez down the road. He's got other two teammates in the main group behind him to keep an eye on what's happening, to try and slow things down. Now he's bouncing across, trying to catch his teammate up in the front, Dominguez. And suddenly that 2 minutes and 28 seconds that separates him from Zola is under threat. This morning, Dufo was in second spot, the uh, Lotus Festina Rada at 1 minute and 13 seconds. Escart in third at 2 minutes and 28 seconds. Le Danois, who doesn't seem to have made the selection today, is back at 3 minutes and 57 seconds. Saina, 4.13, he's had a bit of a rough patch today as well, but he's, he's managed to get back into that group. Serrano is in that group behind this morning, 6 overall, 5 minutes and 13 seconds. The other Calme Rada, Hellas, is there seventh at 5.23. So how well the Calme arrive? They've got three men in the top seven overall on general classification and you see say how green is our valley how green are our shorts because they certainly these green pants have been showing a very very uh, good presence in this race so far they lead on the uh, team competition by eight minutes and 58 seconds from Benesto overall so the Calme Costa Blanca Eurosport team now trying to uh, play havoc with the plans the aims and aspirations of the Anse squad Overall this morning on the points, Laurent Jalabert in the pinky coloured jersey. The climber overall was still being led by uh, Sarezzo. He had 69 points. Uh, Dufo second, Jimenez back into third spot. Look at this now, he comes up to his teammate. This is perfect. Leading on the sprints is Radielli, who's already snaffled a couple of sprints today. So that uh, should stay with Radielli towards the end. But we're watching to see, A, who'll win the stage, and B, can this man nearly really put down a challenge for the Amarillo jersey. I mentioned briefly, Lenoir of the GAN team. If you didn't catch up with the news yesterday, if you weren't watching Eurosport, GAN have got a sponsor, or to put it more precisely, Leger, the team manager of GAN, has got uh, a sponsor for the from August the 1st onwards, 1988. It's the Credit Agricole. And what's going to happen, GAN will sponsor through until the end of July, and then they'll take over. So uh, Bourbon has got his sponsorship uh, stitched up for next year, uh, although at the moment, he must be contemplating his form for the end of the season. As we're watching this going on now, this interesting battle at the top of the climb, I'll quickly put you in the picture of yesterday's Grand Prix de Nation, if you didn't pick up the information. Uwe Peschel of Germany won the Grand Prix de Nation, 72 kilometres, and he was ahead. He won by 1 hour, 30 minutes and 52 seconds, ahead by 24 seconds at uh, Mark Striel of Belgium. And disappointingly, Chris Borman was back at 44 seconds. Eddie Senio, uh, Gann was fourth at 53 seconds. Eric Roiking in his final season as a pro finished 1.11 back on Uwe Peschel. Johan Muzel, the world champion, sixth in 1 minute and 12 seconds. Richard Veronk in 1 
minute 54 seconds back was seventh spot Christophe Moreau a previous winner of the amateur Grand Prix de Nation was eighth at 155 and Gilles Magna of France ninth 159 Pascal Lance another good time tries back in tenth at 230 so I was watching these chaps go up here just put you the picture of British viewers sorry for those who are outside Britain who are that interested what happens to the Brits I know you listen to English broadcast but I'm sure our people would like to know that Chris in fact had um, uh, Richard Veronk in his sight and he caught him uh, for two minutes quite early on well at halfway through and then rode away from him and Chris I think took an enormous packet towards the back end my information is that he began to slow towards the back of the 72 kilometers Veronk caught him and went past him so uh, something is at the moment missing in, in Chris's armory for the upcoming World Championship. He was there, he was leading in fact early on, Chris Baldwin was an early leader, but in the end he faded to finish 44 seconds down. I'll try and find out during the week uh, by phoning back to England exactly uh, how he's feeling, but so I, he seems to have lost a bit of zip at the moment, Chris, as has people like Ab Abra Milano who's retired from this race as well. So many riders are tired by the long season and the pressure they've been under. In fact, I was speaking to Patrick Jonker of the Rabobank team uh, last night, and he was saying that uh, at the moment, Peter Luttenberger in this race, they were expecting quite a lot of him, but he's had stomach trouble, he's been stuffering, and yesterday I said to Patrick, well, why did David, uh, Danny Ellison go uh, with that early break? He said, well, we've been told by our team management we have to get somebody up in the early breaks to try and see if we can get away. So, but the, the pace has been so fast, even at the start of the mountain stay, they were going flat out, from the word go and when you've got a sick stomach he said like uh, uh, Luttenberger's got there's just no way you can stand the, the, the speed at all so so many tired legs and in fact Patrick was saying to me that he's not certain if he's going to ride the world championship uh, for Australia he thinks he might go back to his home in uh, in Adelaide and enjoy the, the sort of uh, what's well, going to be there uh, summer as such and recover ready for for next season as such but uh, nevertheless we're here on the Tour of Spain in the murky conditions now with the Calme team really trying to sort out those tired legs of the group behind and Canis Gartin pull back a lot of that uh, deficit which exists between him and Sulla the overall leader he now has gone past his teammate uh, Dominguez and he's pressing on toward the top of the climb he has a 23 maybe now 25 second lead on the main group uh, behind what's left of the main group with Alex Sulla and his teammates chasing hard to pull him back you can see here suddenly Leo Bruce has blown on the left hand side he's pulled over Jalabert looks back to see uh, who else is with him just uh, Zula on his wheel and Jalabert has been a revelation today in this race he's been going extremely well indeed as we went over that uh, climb that first category climb of the Alto Merador del Tito uh, 119 kilometers being covered when they went over the top it was Jalabert that went over in first place he just rode off the front of him and on the descent he attacked all the way down gained a lead of nearly half a minute and then down in the valley sat up and let the rest of the bunch come back so Jalabert is an enigma really in some respects he has sudden bursts of supreme form like he's done already today now he's back Shelting Zula trying to pull back the man you see on your screens up there just a moment ago Escartin and suffering here the uh, the Festina team are under pressure now. They have to do something today to keep Dufo in contention. He's dropping off the pace now. He's dropping off. Uh, we, we saw a bit further back down the road that his team were round about him in great numbers, but I think they're also suffering with the uh, conditions, the speed of this race, the pressure at uh, which they've been under. Because so far they've covered 2,481 kilometers as at this morning. Uh, that's 1,500 miles since we set up just over two weeks ago. And they've averaged so far 40.911 kilometers. That's 25 miles an hour uphill, down dale, through the baking heat, the 30 degrees of heat, the 32 degrees of heat, the heat through the night, through the day. And now it's getting colder and damp, but still the legs have to go round. Only one day's rest in those past uh, uh, 15 days. This then is stage 15 of the tour. And Garten has decided to attack. They've often complained this man sits in wheels and doesn't attack. Now you're watching him attack. He's getting a newfound uh, uh, encouragement from his, his team manager to go for it. And on the left-hand side there, we saw briefly, as uh, they catch now Dominguez, that... Uh, 
Uh, Pavel Tomkov is also looking good and riding with this uh, uh, with this chasing group. All the bash flags are out now to encourage Escarthin. He can't want for much more than a, a climb like this. The sort of territory he knows well, and a chance really to to grab back some time on the Amarillo jersey of Zilla on the right-hand side of your screen. So quickly then, what's happened today, you ask? Well, we had an intermediate sprint after two, uh, two kilometres. Duran got that one. Radiali was second. Conte was third. After eight kilometres, the second sprint, Duran got that one. Cangineri second. Radiali third. Radiali keeps the sprint to Jersey. Uh, Rossioli went away and had a, a lead after 16 kilometres of just about uh, 5 to 10 seconds, but he built it up, and by 28 kilometres, Rossioli 146. He kept going, he actually crashed into a dog, did Rossioli, after 39 kilometres. Bang, down he went, and they banded him up, and he survived, and he went on. And uh, the average speed of the first hour was 45.5 kilometres uh, per hour, but still Roscioli pressed on. His lead was over two minutes. He kept on going to Roscioli, despite the pain from that crash, and uh, they were well ahead of the fastest time of the race. And then we came up to the, the climb of the Alto de la Penta uh, del Pobre, and by then, Roscioli's difference uh, was being cut back. It had been just under three minutes, and as they climbed up the climb, uh, Roscioli went over the top in first spot, uh, followed by uh, Serezzo, then Ura and Bramati. That was a third carry climb after 99 kilometres, and then really they started to chase him down all the way, and they finally grabbed Roscioli on the last climb of the day, that uh, uh, first category climb which was taken by Jalabert and for Roscioli it was all over by the congratulations for yet again a sterling performance uh, for a man who loves to throw down the gauntlet and have a go at them. There we are, you see now on your screens Zula on the right hand side of your screen, the overall race leader started 2 minutes and 28 seconds ahead of Escartin who's popped off down the road to try and get the stage victory. Murky conditions here as Jalabert. Sometimes they, some people call him uh, Yogi Bear. You call him what you like, but uh, Jalabert is now trying to pull back this man in front. In fact, talking about bears, by the way, some bears actually survive on this climb, although they're rarely seen. So the encouragement here from uh, for Pino. Pino, actually, the team manager of the Calme Costa Blanca uh, Eurosport squad, driving the car behind it. He's won a stage uh, which has finished up on this climb. In fact, he won that one in 1989 when it came in here from uh, uh, Santana. So he knows the climb well. He's encouraging his, his man, Escarta, to go on hard up this rather interesting part. It's a natural park area. Uh, in the Asturias, in the north of Spain, and uh, no chance today if we, our cameras went across this amazing mountain uh, scape to see not only the bears, but they've also wild cats here too, ospreys and vultures as well. Well, the vulture at the moment <laughs> is going to eat up and snap all the time is Escartin. He's going to really take the, this race by the scruff of the neck. Now, any minute now, Escartin, if he keeps going, going, will begin to get into a one-minute lead. Tremendous performance by this superb climber. Here he goes now. I know that if uh, Chris Borman is back at home watching this one, he'd be smarting under the attack that Escartin put in during the Tour of Catalonia to uh, try and take the jersey off him on what the last but one stage, I think it was. So he knows just how well Escartin can climb. Gifted climber, Escartin. But now you see Jalabert do a tremendous job to shield Zula to try and keep him uh, the, the deficit to the absolute minimum on the climb. And Tomkov looks like he's really just hanging on here. He the blue and white colours, left-hand side of your screen, then Jimenez just behind him. So we've only got four men left behind Escartin who started to accelerate. But we've got two pictures of Escartin, top left, bottom right, Jalabert top right, leading the chase, and bottom left you have the tail end of what's left of the main group with Jimenez bringing up the rear there. Just ahead of him is the driving force of Jalabert. Ooh, steady on, lads. Now, have here a moment of prayer and thought. It is Sunday, so we're allowed to pray. You can pray any day you like him. You can pray anywhere you want. But today, in the rain, on the Sunday, uh, spare a thought for uh, Zola as the gap has now come down. It was approaching half a minute. It's now down to 15 seconds. Just, just keep your breath for these riders on this climb. This is one of those little bit of a drops that they have. Then it goes up again. These very wet conditions are absolutely... A, a diabolical bike riders because they can slip off the road as we had the other day when Muller went down the uh, uh, the edge of a, uh, a, a turn fell 15 uh, meters uh, sorry five meters and took a long time to climb back up again keep your fingers crossed 
Through the murk comes the chasing group uh, trying to pull back Escarted. Last time checked 19 seconds with five kilometres to go on this climb to the top of the Lagos uh, de Cabadonga. The man really perhaps who's suffering most of all though is Lola Dufo. He's been shot out the back of the pack and is losing time all the way and we'll have the watches on him when he comes through. He lost a lot of time yesterday uh, also when he dropped back on the, on the climb because he started the day 32 seconds down uh, Dufo uh, and then yesterday he dropped a lot more time and dropped to 1.13. He's dropped again right now so the Swiss rider who my co-commentator from time to time with Stephen Roach has said he's one of the stars of tomorrow. The man who finished second last year in the tour. He's now under pressure and this man might well climb up into second spot this Garten who start this morning uh, one minute and some 15 seconds down on Dufo. So all could change on this uh, big day in the mountains we will not be in the mountains again until stage 19 when we have a couple of first category climbs but it's a fairly easy run into the finish at uh, uh, de San Rafael at stage 19 stage 20 again some climbs but it's a run down into the finish at uh, Avia so it could well be says he holding his breath it could well be that this is going to be the final showdown when the uh, climbers like uh, Escartin can do something about grabbing back time on Zula because we've got to have another time trial stage in the Tour of Spain and at that particular point then Zula is likely to show his supreme authority too. So providing all goes well after today and Zula stays reasonably well in contention with Escartin and Dufo's blown out the back then one, two and three will not be set in tablets of stone by the way because cycle racing being what it is anything can happen right down to the, the, the last minute like do you remember? 1989, Lola Fignol lost the tour by eight seconds. Unbelievable. I was working then for the first time in the Eurosport in 89 when we were broadcasting from London. And I said to the producer, no way will uh, Le Mans pull back. Uh, I think about 51 or 54 seconds in 21 kilometers, whatever it was. I said, it just isn't possible with Fignol riding into Paris, his hometown. She said, no, 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 keep it, David. Keep it open. Anything might happen. And what happened? Le Mans won by eight seconds, and I fell off my chair at the end. No, I was stone cold sober. It's just I leant back, and the back of the chair collapsed. And uh, I had the hand mic in my, against my lips, and it just flew out of my hands, and there's an enormous great silence. And I think it added to the drama. And I tried to get up to my seat while looking at the screen. I was looking at the ceiling. So with bike racing, you never, 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 never know. But uh, right now, this is the day when the scene's going to be set for the next few days racing. When we come off this, of course, the usual thing you'll find that other people who are not great mountain climbers have come back for stage victories so plenty more of action on Eurosport uh, covering the Tour of Spain for the next uh, next week right up until Sunday week today when we finish it look at this man Escarting go what a tremendous climber he is winner I say of the Tour of Catalonia he grabbed stage six when he pushed Bourbon back by nine seconds he rolled on to win the race overall when uh, Chris edge back a bit but that fighting performance by Chris on stage uh, six when he got the uh, leader's jersey to stay in contention behind Escart it was something you had to see now Jalabert uh, here has been doing a tremendous performance by the way he's been one of the strong men of today's race but he really has suddenly blown the gasket this is the things that can happen Tonkov now riding away from Zula too Tonkov is on his own here no wonder the Mape rider earlier on Lanfranchi been trying to drive hard because Tonkov must have said hey 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 I feel good Tonkov has been having a pretty disastrous uh, tour of Spain he's way off the pace on general classification I've grabbed the piece of paper and tell you where it is at the moment he's, he's about I don't know, three or four uh, I mean more than that 20 odd minutes down on the overall standing is Tomkov but uh, he grabbed that stage uh, 13 unlucky for some but not for Tomkov he got it to celebrate the birth of his baby son uh, Nicholas and in fact he went he was flown back by helicopter by the MAPE team uh, to uh, see his uh, little newborn baby and that seems to have inspired this man who really started this tour in bad form but now he's starting to come he must have said that's why Lanfranchi early on was driving I, I couldn't understand it but they, obviously Tonkov said look I feel good I mean every bike rider knows when you go sometimes into a race your legs are like lead aren't they and you're riding around you're riding on your, your experience totally and you just you stay with it you can't do anything it's not one of those days and then suddenly one day you're flying your wheels are about three inches off the ground every time you push you go forward faster and suddenly you're absolutely going you know like nobody and here he comes now Tonkov he's on a flyer an absolute flyer the man who was second in the tour 
of uh, Italy this year, winner of the Tour of Italy last year, a man who's finished uh, uh, second in the Tour of uh, Switzerland as well, is now looking like he's going for yet another stage victory. This is tremendous performance by Tom Cobb, spurred on then by the birth of his baby son Nicholas. But uh, now Zola is going to concentrate. He couldn't care less about Tom Cobb on general classification. Tom Cobb is no threat at all to his overall position. His concern is to get his scarf him back and say, look, I'm boss here and I'm going to sit with you and I'm going to make sure you don't grab any more time back off me. So I think when Zola gets there, he prepared to get his breath back and sit with uh, Escarthing. Well, we'll have to wait and see if he just he exactly does that. But generally speaking, there's no reason for Zilla to any more than mark out uh, Escarthing. And Tom Cobb has chosen just the right time to do that superb attack, which has taken them up there into the, uh, the chance of getting this stage victory. Jimenez here, sitting in, just waiting for a chance to move. He hasn't had to do much so far. And if Tom Cobb misses the beat, Jimenez will come at him very quickly. Perhaps it's glad it's murky conditions like this, because if you looked over the side of this mountain, your, your legs would go to water. If any of you out there don't like heights, then don't go out on things like the big tours when you go over these big mountains. You look back down the side of some of them, and it's unbelievable what they've climbed up and how far back down the other side it is down into the valley where the houses below look like matchstick but today in these miserable conditions they can't see what's down there they can't see much what's ahead of you saw the water then on the screen didn't you right Can you imagine uh, Alex Zilla rides with glasses on and the conditions there with the water coming onto the screen that's what he has to look at this is like Zilla Zilla sees this right and now you can understand why from time to time Alex falls off in the wet there he is he's second at the moment one kilometer to go I mean, when you don't have glasses, you can blink your eyes and the water may come into them, but it doesn't matter that much. But really, when you've got glasses, this is what Zilla sees. Goes past him saying, I'm boss, hard luck, sunshine. <laughs> well, not exactly the thing to say when it's raining, is it? But uh, hard luck, I'm coming through you. You try to pinch back some time, you're not going to get it. Here I go. Zilla looking so strong at the moment. Uh, can he catch uh, Tomkov, though? Can he get the stage victory? Zilla had to keep himself uh, really in contention with the people challenging him for the overall, but he's now 16 seconds back on Tonkov, riding hard here. And look, Zilla's gone. Zilla's down the road, and what a superb performance of sheer strength. Well, Zilla is one of these unbelievable men. I still think Zilla could win the Tour de France if only he doesn't fall off either before or during it. He's got enormous class. He can time trial. He's been time trial champion of the world. He can climb mountains too. He's got a tremendous capacity to recover from the exertions of the day before and come back. He's also got a very good brain to race and understand what's happening. His tactical understanding is tremendous. His onset team is so strong. And now Zilla is looking for a chance to try and pull back Tonkov here and maybe reinforce his position as the uh, leader in the Ariola jersey by trying to take this uh, stage if he can just catch Tom Cobb. We're inside the final kilometre now. No, no, straight on. That's where the, the team cars are going. Oh, moment of panic then for Tom Cobb. This fellow now, more Italian, I suppose, than Russian. Looking like he's going to get his second stage victory of the Tour of Spain, but uh, not only about it, Azula has hammered the people in contention, ran about him, say, look, I'm the boss, and that's it. And I think he's only fine style on the last of the big climb. We've got two more days with climbs to come, but no more uphill finishes like we're seeing today. As Tonkov riding in then for his second stage victory uh, in the Tour of uh, Spain. And then he's got yet another one as he goes across the murky signs painted there by Mr. Fiat, if you can read it. I think they didn't use the best of paints either. But he's got the stage victory. His second one, he won stage 13. And on that day, Kimenez came in second, Dupo was third. But um, Zola goes across the line now. And the thing is, where is Dufo? The gap there, 23 seconds in between Tom Cobb, the winners. Jimenez comes in here, then Escartin. So Escartin's lost about 10 seconds on Zilla on that climb. Jalabert coming in now, going through. <laughs> it's an obstacle course. The end of the Tour of Spain is more like an obstacle course than a straight-out finish. It's, it's like snakes and ladders almost. You have to dodge all the... Um, 
all the, all the, all the, the men standing out there, or even one of those sort of games you play in an amusement arcade, as you have to be careful you don't get zapped by, by some foreign uh, spaceship. And they have uh, the touch apps out, they're trying to control the race. That sign are coming across here. I'm still waiting for Jufo to come in. Tomkov got the stage victory, but uh, in reality, the big question is what has happened to Jufo? Uh, Skarting came in just 10 seconds after him. Here I see the congratulations from uh, Jalibert there to his teammate. So, in fact, Zola looked very uh, shattered as we uh, had a look at him just a few moments ago. I think he rode himself, I would say, to oblivion, but he rode very hard today to stay up there, and I think he's taken quite a bit out of him. But in reality, it doesn't matter that much because we're going back into the flatter days now, and he shouldn't lose any time against the other people. But uh, uh, with the gap now, 1 minute to 25 seconds, uh, according to my watch, between uh, Zola and Dufo. He still hasn't come into sight then as uh, we get uh, <laughs> the man with the umbrella now wishing to get run over by Massey, I think it was, that's just come in. Uh, and one of the refing riders, the whole concentration now. You see running up at the top of your screen, two minutes and four seconds. That's back from Tonka, but that isn't the main thing. It's where is Jufo? Uh, no, he hasn't come in yet either. Well, Jufo this morning looks like he might lose his second spot because he was just one minute and uh, 15 seconds ahead of Escarte. It's gone now, it's over two minutes now, so Dufo's dropped out of second spot, Escarte's moved up into second, uh, and so Dufo then will be dropping down into the third spot and a group of them coming there and I think he could be in that one it looks like uh, uh, at least three of the Festina riders came in there I suggest that might have been Dufo coming in uh, at about two minutes and 25 seconds down so in reality he has now dropped out the frame he is probably going to be uh, beyond uh, Escartin in the general classification right now. Zola really has uh, done a tremendous job today. If you look again at Pavel Tonkov coming in to finish the stage, but uh, the Lotus Festina rider, not uh, happy, I think, with his performance, but uh, Pavel Tonkov won his second stage victory in the tour so far, and that one again will please his wife, who may be looking at the uh, television set, certainly knowing the way in which uh, the hospitals provide people what they want in hospital when you've got a young baby. I suggest that she might be watching the results of the stage today and we'll see her husband yet again getting another stage victory. I suppose in reality, if everyone's honest about it, that Pavel Tonkov dedicated his stage victory the other day to Nicholas, his young son, and now this is one then for his wife to bore him that son just on Tuesday night. Pavel Tonkov, victor then of the stage today makes up for his disappointing start the race when he started with all sort of physical problems that many of these riders have had but now he's come good look at the water spraying up on his back from the back wheel then he's ridden through some terrible conditions to take the victory Zula coming up to take the jersey but you can just see by look at now watch Zula's face look he may be smiling but that man is exhausted he really rode hard today. He had to show his scart and he was still boss. He's seen that Jufo off as well, who may have dropped down to third spot overall. But uh, he's got that MRO jersey, and with the flatter stages coming up ahead of us now for, what, the next five days or so? What we on stage 15? Yeah, another four days, in fact, before we go up to the mountains as well. He certainly will keep that yellow jersey unless something terrible happens. But uh, Zilla, a brilliant ride today to come into second place. But for Tonkov, another victory to uh, sort of celebrate the uh, arrival of his young boy Nicola. We're going to be back on air again tomorrow about the same time. I hope you'll join me then, David Duffield, for the next day in the Tour of Spain. And we hope the weather gets better too as we go in towards Santander. Until then, from me and the crew, time to say hasta mañana.
Rabobank team decide to do something about it now because uh, Covetis riders, uh, Moro Fondres, haul back in as we're coming up now then uh, to the five kilometre to go point. And there it is, and under that banner, another all singing and dancing attack from the Rabobank team. And it's a good attempt on their part, I think, but somehow I have a suspicion that the Mape team for Sferada, the Ante team for Jalabert, and perhaps even the TBM team for uh, Mackelson might be working hard here to, to pull this uh, this one man back into the pack. If we go back through the st sprint fixtures uh, we've had so far, of course, Vust likewise for the Festina team. We haven't seen much of Festina on the front. The first sprint we had into Estoril. Mackelson got that ahead of Kia Pucci. Jalabert was in third spot. Uh, Vust won the next stage ahead of Serrata with Guidi in uh, uh, third spot. Went on then to stage three. Vust got that one ahead of Guidi and Chutenberg from the US Postal team was in third spot. And the next of the sprints would have been, but Anguita nipped off the front into Jerez La Frontera, came in from Brescia, popped into second place, Ferrara was third. So those have been most of the sprints we've had. By the time we got to the run down to Malaga, uh, Vust survived that day to take first place ahead of Raimondi of Brescia, and Edo was in third spot. So those were the, the early seas, the early part of the race, the early flat bits, and Vust uh, getting himself three stage victories in the race because he certainly chose his sprints extremely well indeed. So keep your fingers crossed, will he get the fourth victory in the race so far? So again, Rabobank on the front, we're ironing up on this one. There's no gap coming though, you can't get away at this way to not. So, first victory, Mackelson. Second stage, Bus. Third stage, Bus. Then Anguita stole off the front. Uh, Bus got the next one at Malaga. Now then, Serrata got the stage into... Uh, Placencia when we came back onto the flat part of the course. Serrata, can he get another one here? When we went up in the mountains, it all changed then. But right now, the sprinters have recovered from the thrashing in the mountains, or those that have, have their moment of glory coming up. And it'll be like this then, as we go on for the next few days. Three commits to go. And further back here, the chaps you're looking at now are just hanging on there's no way they're going to uh, take part. You've got to be in the top, what, 20 or 30 at the most here if you've got a chance of coming through. And as far as Prince is concerned, probably in the top uh, 10 places. Still plenty of Mappe about there in the front for Serrada. <sighs> Swinging a bit wide is the problems. Breschelaar again putting the pressure on the front. Looks back there and see what damage he's done. And still you see the, the power of the Mappe team is here with the Hard working going on the front. Mappe undoubtedly, with a lot of riders still in this race, they've only lost what Zanini so far. They've still got about eight men left in the race. Sorry. Oh, Tonkov retired this morning, so they've still got about seven men left. They've got plenty of ammunition primed and ready to protect uh, Serrata on his way in now. Serrata lying third on the points classification. Breschelaar still determined to do something about it here. Breschelaar on the front. Well, they have to hope for a split, surely Breschlav, because Kamin is their best sprinter, Breschlav, Kamin, but uh, he's only been there second and third places. Raimondi, who's leading in the sprint series overall, wears a completely blue jersey, doesn't normally come into play in the big uh, sprints at the end of the stage. He, he picks up the individual ones on the way through, and then yet again, Rabobank come through now. Their star man for this is going to be Van Bon. Patrick Jonker has got a useful turn of speed in situations like this. We've now got one coming to go. And on this run through here, I'll tell you, they've just got this uh, little kink in the road ahead of them with 500 metres, or less than 500 metres from the finish. Shouldn't be too much harm for them. Still the high-speed chase is going on here.
Well, Rabank have blown the gasket. They've left Van Bonne in place there. Coming up then towards 300 metres to go. Refin beginning to put the pressure on the front then. But on the right-hand side, power coming through. And in the centre. That's Ferrara now. Ferrara's hitting the hard, hard pedal. He slams down the accelerator. He goes across the line then. So Ferrara gets that one. And my goodness, the accelerator was down firmly to the floors. He took off then with Vuss on his right-hand side. He just came out of that pack. The rest looked like they were in a different race. And Ferrara took the victory. On the right-hand side, I could see uh, Vuss coming a bit late onto the scene. But all the attempts by people like Breschelar and Refin and uh, Screenio to set it up uh, seem to have changed now or so it's evaporated with about 500 meters to go and let's watch it again Serrata in the center here with his head down with that uh, lightish colored crash hat and the bluish mape jersey on start to come through here and there's nobody's going to stop him is there hey eh? look at that who you you lots i'm here hey time to celebrate and the rest of silsbury it's a different race isn't it well and yet michael sonova on the extreme right probably got fourth in that sprint and psycho popping out one of their riders too, as well, which might be Canzanera. Let's have a look again. There he is. Yep, Psycho. No, no. Vust second. Psycho rider. Uh, could be Debasco. Debasco third. Mickelson fourth. Van Bon fifth, and so on back from there. Tutenberg over the far side uh, took the uh, what maybe sixth place, I suppose, and the rest coming. There's Ado, and let's look again from the top. What a tremendous. Uh, Bursa speed took him straight through out of the pack. So the stage victory, the second one in the tour this year, goes to uh, Jan Serrata. using the extreme uh, edge of the road to try and shake the chasers off the tail because with the crosswind coming over here the good thing to do is to get yourself well into the gutter and hope you don't run over anything that's going to puncture your bike either because you've got very 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 thin tires on today it was going to be quite smooth roads not just the rough stuff we've had when we've been up in the mountains but now he's riding on what is not much better than a cycle track i suppose and the rest of the race behind him still got him nicely in their sights this is the refin rider trying for a long one i'll try and idea him for you in just a moment but after a very hot day in the saddle on this stage going into the finish at Burgos, you see the sign in the background as the sun on there. They've actually covered 182 kilometers when they get to finish as such, as the chase group now, well and truly down, come through the five kilometers to go. They did split suddenly down the road, and they have been awfully marooned, some of these riders here, and they're desperately trying to uh, keep in contention that long string, and those have missed it now. I said earlier on, the team manager will be wagging the fingers if in there there's anybody of significance that should have been in with a shout for the sprint. But having seen the uh, Festina team go through at the front, having seen some of the Mappe team go through, I feel the chaps of first and second yesterday, uh, Vust and uh, Sferrada, uh, could well be in that group. There's your split on your screen now. One minute and seven seconds. Of no great consequence unless uh, something like Escartin is stuck back in that backpack behind and we'll have to wait and see if the cameras pick that up. We saw him chasing along. In fact, there's lots of green jerseys on front. I think he's in this little group. We'll be going backwards and forwards, so Escardi could well be in this little group with Haras and Serrano, with the uh, Kami team having three men in the top six in this race. Right at the back here, the TVM rider, that's uh, Petillo of France. Not going to much help to Lars Mackelson when it comes to the sprint. I think Lars is a sort of character who, provided he's got one man with him to help him out. And yesterday, uh, Van Houten uh, came in uh, just behind him, the big Rabobank rider. I suspect he's probably taking his wheel as such when they came through. They begin to find out the other big blokes they can go for with three kilometres to go now. And 
Michelson looks after himself, a bit like Moncasson trying to find somebody to follow through, uh, particularly since uh, Jeskis Kim is no longer in the race, who will be there uh, offering some help as such, I think. Uh, Voskam, of course, could be quite useful too, but I think Michelson will be doing a lot. There he is now. One, two, three, four back from the front. I think that... Let's have another chance to have a look at it. There's certainly a TVM rider in there at the moment. Lars is always hanging about in the, the top ten places. Likes to go, not have a nice little lead up if he can get it, but if not, he's got to survive as to feel like Moncas. And Moncas disregards the GAN team when it comes to the finish. He says, OK, leave me to myself and I'll follow it. And I know where to go. Because these sprinters know each other. They've got an uh, insatiable appetite for the drama and the sheer surge of adrenaline when it comes to the sprint finish. That's not Michelson from TBM on the right-hand side of the screen. Certainly not at the moment. Doesn't look like him at all. Two kilometres to go, says he. Probably gets it totally wrong and has to eat his sandals for lunch. Well, the run-in today should be pretty easy for these riders. There's nothing much really serious to contend them with. They've got a very straight run. They've got a good left-hander. They come up to the one kilometre and he's dead straight up uh, into the finish. So yet again, Psycho and Refin trying to get themselves a stage victory. They end up doing most of the work on the front. This is it. We're round it now. The one kilometre and it's a nice run, shouldn't be too much difficulty. Coming up to one kilometre banner, and from now on in, it's a straight line, and all over by the shouting. That's it, there's your 1K, dead straight. They can see the finish, the finish can see them. And a quick charge down the left-hand side, 1K to go. One or two of the people like Ekimov have to go. In fact, he probably left it a bit too late now. And suddenly the sprinters are ducking and diving, looking for a wheel to follow, and the gaps have opened up. Are we going to have an unusual finish like we saw in Guita the other day? Get the stage, Ricky, when he popped out with one and a half kilometres to go. And yet again, it's Mappe on the front. Unusual move for them, because I thought they would have been towing Serrada in towards the finish. Perhaps he's blown out the back, I don't know, but still on the front. Then it is uh, Mappe trying to lead this one out, but Van Bonnen and the rest are in quick click attention. In fact, it's Fondres had gone onto his wheel, and I think that's again on the right hand side. A launch into space by Teutonberg, possibly from US Postal Service, or is it uh, Vassal Fuss from the Festina team? And Tronald Pierce and the Merck of the camera picking up some pretty grotty figures out there and still on the front and driving hard. It looks like Teutonberg, but he's lost it as Sarada beats the front. Sarada starts to go. Fuss on the left hand side goes through, and Sarada gets it ahead of Fuss then. And bad luck for Teutonberg, who tried to go a long way out, but Sarada came through. Fuss there was just behind him in second spot, and uh, that's Yet another back-to-back -back victory for Mappe. They've had uh, Sabrada now win uh, three stages in this tour. They've had Tonkov win two stages. the best sprinter I suppose, perhaps next to Betty in this group, doesn't want to do much work, they're just trying to close down uh, Claudio Chiapucci and Galdiano. Brushard, not the world's greatest sprinter, has been suffering with sickness so far, the long lanky Festina riders have come inside two kilometers to go, these two breakaway riders are well in sight of this chasing group. There he goes, that's him off. He has to try and get this lot off his wheel. I said he needs to go with about uh, three kilometers ago. He's actually kept down at 2Ks. Can he get them off his wheel as Brushard now tries to close the gap? Has Ekimov got enough steam in his legs, but it doesn't look like it. The specialist who in years gone by could have blasted them out. Looks like he's still struggling in this race. He's tried to... Uh, to close that gap down, but he's been now accompanied by the rest of the pack. So Ekimov's attempt to do his normal sort of blast on the front has come to nothing. It isn't in his legs. Drifts to the back. Still then, Claudio Capucci on the front. 
from Galdiano. The sweeping left-hander. No problem at the moment for these riders. One commit to go. And as they do this, there's a big, sharp right-hander. And then a big left-hander with just 350 minutes to go. This could be chaos in a big group, but right now they can pick their line. Claudio Chiapucci takes it first. Kipuji looks back for assistance here. Then they got the right-hander. This is it. And they close the gap down. There's a short left-hander in the Place de Con before they come down the finishing straight with about 250 minutes to go. So Kipuji looking for a victory here, but they're coming at him now. Galdiano still on the front. And it's Brochard that's pulling them back. They came off try, but Fallon Kipuji tries to take off. But Brochard closes the gap down. 500 metres to go now. Then the big sharp left-hander has now been accomplished. They got around it safely. So on the front then, as they go for the line, it's Ekimov that comes through. Oh, that's a big... He's gone out too wide. He's gone out too wide. Ekimov suddenly dropped a lot of space, and Van Bon now is back in with a chance. The best sprinter in the pack, really. Van Bon looks like he's going to get it. As Ekimov sits up, Brochard goes over. Van Bon is fighting for this one. Van Bon gets it ahead of Brochard. Betim was back in third spot. But the attempt then of Ekimov to go away came to nothing as he came around that sharp left hander, ran out of steam, ran out of space, and suddenly Van Bon, who kept his cool, kept in there, found the. Uh, opportunity to come through and take the sprint on the line. Van Bon taking that one. Rabobank at long last have got the victory they've been looking for as the main group back here have still got some way to go to get in toward the finish. And look, you can see on the front now we have the Mape team because what is at stake in this uh, group behind here? We've now got those men in already, but uh, they want to try and get Serrada in for a sprint here at the end. As we re-look really at the slow motion of Van Bon fighting his way forward from Brochard, the rest of the people who tried so manfully, the Kierputchi and Ekimov this world, out of contention. Those who kept their cool were in contention for the sprint. Van Bon took it from Brochard and looked like better there just in third spot. Top view down for you of the sprint yet again. And Van Bon, very, very cagey uh, man. I think he recognised he couldn't go too far out. And so he pulled off the success. Brochard, though, looking good. And for the next two days, I would think that he might well perform uh, on behalf of the Festina squad, something which uh, could do with a stage victory, I think, for him likewise. Van Bon then, the victor today. And now the rest of the pack coming on in. Serrata looking for some more points in the points competition of this race. But I think he's going to have to watch it because they're sliding off for the front already, left, right and centre, to make life difficult for him. He certainly wants to close down that uh, gap which exists between himself and uh, Jalabert, who wears the pink jersey. This morning, uh, Jalabert had 148 points in the points competition, Serrata 135, and they've let two men drift off the front. Looks like Debasco going for this one. So perhaps Serrata and Jalabert have their own little differences to settle back in the main pack. So Debasco still. Working away here at the moment, two kilometres to go. Are they going to be overwhelmed by the big bunch of riders behind them? Uh, yes, I think they will be, because here comes the uh, Screeno team. The gap's being closed out now. They're trying to set up them for Guidi or Conte to get some uh, sprints. And just watching him going through there, that is, in fact, uh, Piero of the Screeno team. He won't aid this one. He'll just sit on there now, just make sure that they don't get too far. Look, he's looking back over his shoulder to see where Guidi and Conte have got. His job is to do nothing to try and help this break now. And there off goes Tabasco yet again. Sounds like the stuff you put on your food, doesn't it? Tabasco, you know, the hot stuff. Well, he's hot when it comes to sprint, but I think the bunch coming up behind are going to swallow these three up the way they're going now. Ah, now, if you've got somebody in the house of nervous disposition, turn their face to the wall, or at least... Uh, put on some dark glasses or something and don't watch the telly screen because uh, we've got those sweeping bends. We saw how when they came around the, the Place de Colomb, uh, we've got 1K to go. This is the sort of big twice right-hander. Watch this, watch, 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 watch. Another one to come up now, another right-hander. And then we get that sweeping left-hander which cooks inside itself. Look, the man with the yellow flag saying, watch it, lads, but there's worse to come. 
the place to come. And there's a car on the way too. Oh dear, get the ambulances ready. Phone the hospital. <laughs> I hope they get round safe and sound, but it really is going to be difficult for this big bunch. I didn't think they'd be quite as active as this when they're fighting now for what, eighth place as such. When they're coming down here, I'd have thought they'd be a bit more careful about this whole thing. Bruno Thibault in this little break at the moment is not your world's greatest sprinter, but uh, goodness knows why he's charged off the front unless it's self-preservation time. Watch it now, this is the one. See how sweet they swing out towards the far side, towards the barricades, and they've got to cut back in again. It looks like they've all made it at the moment. And so still... Oh, he's, late. he's made it so far at the moment. That's like Pieri, and he gets through there, just ahead of the Basco. It looks like Ferrara came up about, what, fourth or fifth back, and the rest now survived that rather sharp left-hander. There'll be no change overall on the general classification. Instead of looking over the shoulder, see what the time was and what the gap was back between themselves and the leaders, but uh, none, of, none of those riders in the leading group were any challenge to the top pro overall. As we again, the sprint when Van Bon took off from Brochard, who's really so far had a pretty grotty tour but he's come back into form just about the right time and I look forward to seeing what he's going to do tomorrow but he went to uh, Van Bon, the rider from the Rabobank team who took it in superb style